What is up guys? It's your boy Rick Early Morning Cacus and the brand new trailer for the 30th anniversary update arriving later today just dropped. So we're gonna dissect that trailer, talk about all of the amazing information contained within and go over a lot of stuff that you may have missed on your first viewing. And so let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to point out, and this may be nothing, but it caught my attention, is that while you were waiting for the trailer to premiere on the channel, there was actually a anime-style countdown that you can see right here. Now, we know for a fact that Bungie is pursuing alternative media for Destiny 2. In fact, the old director of Destiny 2, Luke Smith, went to head this up. So is this kind of a hint that we're getting a Destiny 2 anime? I mean, again, that's pretty out there, but eh, you never know. All right, now moving on from there, the trailer starts here and we see an absolutely awesome looking Titan here with a sword and a brand new tiger, like flaming tiger helmet here. That's actually pretty sweet. Doing that uppercut, now that's actually pretty important. Uh, this kind of uppercut if I'm remembering correctly, is indicative of the adaptive frame sword, so we kind of know its archetype. Then right after that, we see kind of a sawed off shotgun being shot here. Uh, this was one of the weapons shown off in the original Destiny 2 showcase when they talked about this DLC. And then we see the absolutely iconic thousand yard stare. Now this sniper is from Destiny 1, very, very good in PVP and PVE. So excited to see that return. And of course, then we see the Galahorn being shot. Right after that, we see the Thorn armor set in its full glory, I think on the Titan here and that's going to be one of the rewards from the brand new dungeon that we're going to see more of later. But then, listen, you guys thought the 30th Bungie anniversary would not have Halo weapons? Look at this! The Halo pistol is back in all its glory. It's a little bit of a different style, more befitting Destiny 2, but wow, guys, this is, this is the Halo pistol. I can't believe I'm seeing this. Now, how will this return? Will it be a legendary weapon? Will it be an exotic? I don't exactly know. Notice it kind of has a different sight, like it has a Halo ADS, and that is absolutely fantastic. And right after that, we go from the Halo pistol to the Halo Halo battle rifle, like I said, you guys thought this wasn't coming, come on. So again, we have that same Halo style ADS where it's actually going to showcase a super clean sight picture. Like you've got no sight in the way. Normally in Destiny 2, you don't have peripheral vision, right? That's all blacked out because you're looking down a scope. But with these two weapons, that's actually a pretty big deal for acquiring your targets. So really, really excited about that. And of course, we see even more of this new sword. Now this could be themed after the Halo sword. It definitely looks like half of it for sure. So that could be another reference there, but you know, not as clear of a reference as that pistol and the battle rifle. Then as we continue on, we see a breach loaded grenade launcher uh, being loaded. This was another weapon shown off during the showcase that we kind of knew was coming. Then we see six guardians all shooting the Galahorn. Now the Galahorn was really the best exotic weapon in Destiny 1 for the longest time. It did eventually get a nerf, but even after that, it was still pretty darn good. And uh, you know your boy is gonna be basically recreating this scene because I am gonna be taking six Galahorns, an entire team with Galahorns, through the Last Wish raid to see how good it really is after I get my hands on it. So definitely make sure to hit the notification bell to not miss that. It actually takes the time to show not only are the rockets hitting Atheon, but it shows nearby enemies dying from those wolf pack rounds. For those of you who may not know, essentially after the main explosion, uh, there's these seeking projectiles that go and inflict even more damage either to that initial target or like we see here, to nearby enemies. Then we get to see the brand new Grasp of Avarice dungeon. We see guardians entering through the infamous loot cave, and then we actually see a sparrow section. And that wasn't the most common uh, with dungeons, of course. With Prophecy, we have a big sparrow section, so potentially expect a Grasp of Avarice to be uh, bigger and have more wide open spaces. 
But it's not only that guys, the sparrows themselves are pretty darn awesome. The middle one is definitely a reference to the infamous Halo Ghost vehicle. Same color scheme, just with a little bit of different wings, so that is pretty awesome. You also have like a Winnebago sparrow. You can see the Destiny 2 license plate here, so that is pretty awesome as well. Then moving on from there, we also have this crazy rock skull and a jumping puzzle taking place right in front of it, which is pretty darn cool. And this gameplay, similar to the Sparrow gameplay, is also indicative of just the size of this dungeon. It really appears that this is going to have massive set pieces, so I am very excited for that. Then we get to see the new free six player activity, the Dares of Eternity, and we see good old Zur with the Cosmic Stallion standing here, and uh, looks like there's floating glowing loot boxes here, and this uh, looks absolutely wild. We of course do see a lot of kind of nine themed environments, like this kind of does uh, remind me of the Prophecy Dungeon, just a little bit more crazy, inverted, all of that stuff. And it looks like we're fighting Vex here. Remember, uh, you actually do see there's like a, a wheel and each enemy faction is on this wheel. So presumably you're gonna fight a random enemy type during this activity like every single time out of all the different uh, Destiny enemies. And then of course we see everyone entering into the Scrooge McDuck style loot room here with just gold everywhere, uh, people opening chests and so on. And that just looks like absolutely awesome. And then we see, like I said, different kinds of enemies being killed in this activity. We have Cabal, and then moving on, we have Taken, and then after that, we have some Hive, and then Crota. It's freaking Crota from the Destiny 1 raid. Uh, at least it looks like him making an appearance here randomly in the Dares of Eternity. So uh, I guess there's going to be boss fights featuring some very iconic uh, Destiny characters. So that is pretty darn sweet as well. And then lastly, guys, we have the end slate here, and you can actually see over to the right, that shotgun, yeah, I can recognize that right away, guys. That is the Matador 64, which is an absolutely infamous high-impact shotgun from Destiny 1. This thing was absolutely collecting bodies during that game, so that is returning. Could that be the new best PvP shotgun in the game? Well, it certainly was in Destiny 1, so that is another really big thing to keep your eye on. And of course, we see uh, some pre-order bundle bonuses and some new emotes and so on uh, here for the Witch Queen at the very end. And so guys, that is it for the trailer breakdown. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.